It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. It's Wednesday night, and we did go to church tonight, but we got back in plenty of time to do the Bible study. Chris is actually out there cutting the grass, and I was going to wait till he was finished, uh, but y'all may just have to hear his mower a couple of times. Maybe he's already mowed right up here close to the house. I don't really know, but I think he normally does. So anyway, um, I enjoyed what the pastor taught tonight a lot. I enjoyed it enough that I may even touch base on it tonight. Um, and he was preaching out of Ephesians. But I believe tonight our Bible studies out of uh, 1 Peter. I think it's chapter 4. And it is talking about um, signs that the Holy Spirit not signs, but gifts, Lord have mercy, not signs, gifts that the Holy Spirit um, gifts us with, and um, there's quite a few, and I actually left my lady's Bible in the living room, and it has a list of spiritual gifts. I don't really want to get into the spiritual gifts so much and get that deep into it, so we're just going to talk about what uh, Charles Stanley has to say in our Bible study, and then I may touch on what the pastor was talking about tonight. Because I, well, I mean, I guess it's a good subject for you guys. <laughs> anyway, tonight, um, our scripture, not my dogs are going to bark. Our scripture came out of 1 Peter chapter 4 in verse 10, and it says, As each one has received a special gift, employ it. In serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So, um, in First Peter, he talks about uh, the different gifts that the Holy Spirit does help us with. So, I guess, um, I don't think it would hurt for us to read a little bit of the scripture. And that's First Peter chapter 4. And that verse was out of uh, verse 10. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, I'm, I'm trying to find the best place to start reading. Okay, it says, um, and above all things have, for, uh, I'm not going to be able to say the word, for, 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 fervent, I guess is how you say it, and uh, I've heard it pronounced a million times, but I can't pronounce it. It says, charity, which is love among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sin." Use hospital hospitality one to another without grudging. And as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And that comes out of 1 Peter chapter 4. And I just read a few verses um, there. And I'm just going to read what Charles Stanley uh, talks to us about gifts. Um, I, mean, I, I remember years ago we took a test. It's like a little test. And we took the test to see which spiritual gift we had. And me and Chris both, of course, took the test. But, you know, as years go by, things do change. And I'm sure today my spiritual gifts may not be, excuse me, the same as they were many years ago um, because they do change, like I said. Now, um, I think many years ago, one of my spiritual gifts, I know one of my spiritual gifts is serving. And one good thing about the gift of serving is that uh, 
you don't get yourself in a lot of trouble when you're just serving other people because you're you don't have a big say in anything so i've always felt like because i am opinionated and that kind of thing sometimes i think i'm actually better in the church as a service person you know someone who works in the kitchen or works in the nursery that kind of thing um i think i do better with that kind of stuff but um here in the house it's really easy to t teach a bible study because i'm in my own space and i get to study and it's you know it's not hard and i i, li I like it it was one of my spiritual gifts of course um, and me and Chris both have leadership abilities in our spiritual gifts, you know, when we did take that test. Okay, it says, uh, Charles Stanley says, find your function. That's funny because I think of that song, conjunction, junction, watch your function. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, find your function. Did you, it says, do you know that the Lord created do you know what the Lord created you to do? And are you functioning within the spiritual gifts he has given you? Do you realize that using the talents is central to finding the fulfillment you long for? Any good workman knows you need the right tool for the job. My preacher actually said that tonight. He was saying, he actually brought, said that tonight it's funny because he said you know if you were building a house and or if you were somebody that builds things and your you know your favorite tool might be a hammer um anyway it says when tools are used properly brilliant work can be accomplished but when they're used improperly the results can be disastrous this same principle applies to the way god works through you <clears throat> excuse me through the Holy Spirit, he has gifted you to build up the kingdom in a unique way. But if you're working outside your giftedness, or if you're using your abilities in a way contrary to his will, you may find yourself filled with anxiety and frustration. Your creator has given you your talents so that you may use them for his glory. So, when you use them in his name to serve other people in love, great things can be accomplished. Therefore, today, ask him if you are using your gifts the way he desires. And if the answer is no, ask him to provide opportunities so that you can become everything he created you to be. And he says, Jesus, thank you for the gifts you've given me. Help me to honor you with them. Amen. And then his hope is in Jesus because he does great things through him. Um, and that's Charles Stanley, Jesus, our perfect hope. Um, and in spiritual gifts, there's, there's lots of them. I don't have, um, I did, I left my Bible in there. And I actually had it looked up and one of the things even marked for y'all. So I have Bibles laying everywhere. I'm a Bible nut. I love Bibles. I like different kinds of Bibles. I like different study Bibles. I like different themed Bibles. So, if I left one in one room, there's bound to be one in another room. And of course there was. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about what the preacher had to say tonight because I thought it was really interesting. And I think it helps us get a good, um, a good perspective of where we are as Christians and where the lost are as non-believers. And it helps us want to help them more and use our spiritual gift more when we realize how much they need us. Okay? So he was uh, preaching out of Ephesians chapter 2 tonight. If you have a Bible, you can turn to Ephesians chapter 2. And I'll wait a minute on you. And we will talk a little bit about this. Now, he is preaching, you know, kind of like in line on Wednesday nights. He just kind of goes through. And tonight, he hit on the first three verses the most. And um, and I may do this on Wednesday nights if I, if I feel like it and Lord willing. Come home and kind of touch base on the continuation of the Ephesians. I think it would be kind of cool. Um, and yes, I am in my moo-moo tonight because why shouldn't I be? Um, I'm just in my little study area right 
and I'm well covered, right? That's So that's all that matters. Let's see, it says a new life with Christ. In the first chapter of Ephesians, um, I believe, I was trying to see, he talks about um, our salvation. In the second chapter, these first three verses, according to the pastor, he is going to actually show us a picture of, of us before we were saved and he described it like this he said you know like when you do your selfie picture for facebook or social media and like tonight you can see me from my you know kind of my neck up and that is kind of like all you can see but tonight he says that god is going to give us a full body shot of the lost and kind of show us what they are really like from you know like from top to bottom and like a bigger picture of them uh, to give us more knowledge of what they really look like um, and so he brought that uh, social media picture up because it is true a lot of us and some of us don't even show our photo on social media at all and we show our dog or we show something else so um we're going to read these first three verses and then i'm going to kind of i didn't take notes so i'm just going to kind of try to hit some of his points um that he did and um, i actually left my pen in the truck it was just you know that's how i work it says a new life with christ um it says, and you, and this is talking about us, the ones who are saved, we were at one time in this condition. So listen, it says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And I'll touch on those three things. One is that they're walking in the course of the world. They're, they're walking um, with the prince of the air, which is the devil. And they are walking, um, they're working, they're, chil they're, they're the children of disobedience. So they're disobedient. So those three things, okay? And then it says, among whom also we had in our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, that's big, and that's bad, and that's, you know, and it's who we were before we're saved. And if you're not saved, that's where you are now. And I'm going to kind of explain a little bit of that to you so you'll kind of understand what I'm saying. The first thing he tells us is that when you're lost, you're dead. D-E-A-D, -E dead. In your sin and trespasses. Now, if you go back to Genesis, um, before Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the garden... Um, and I, I mean, I could find the verse, but I pretty much know what it says, and y'all do too. He's, uh, God tells Adam and Eve that if they eat of this fruit, they shall surely, what? Die. And then, a couple of more chapters later, um, the devil says, no, you shall not surely die. But the dead here that we're talking about, that he's talking about dead in your trespasses and sin, and the dead that he was talking about to Adam and Eve were not take your last breath and never breathe again dead. It's spiritual death. Okay. So what we have to understand is that when we are born because of Adam and Eve, um, they did eat of the tree that God told them not to eat of, so they became spiritually dead. 
And um, because of this, when we are born, because we're all of the lineage of Adam and Eve, we are born dead in our trespasses and sin, just like this verse tells us. So we are spiritually dead, not physically dead, spiritually dead. Okay. And one thing that we have to uh, see here as believers or a non-believer, but I'm, I'm trying to get us to see the non-believers around us and see why they are so different than us. And that is when you're spiritually dead, you're really dead. So they don't have a desire for God and they don't have a desire um, for the word of God and they don't have a desire to be in the will of God. Now you could say good and there's plenty of people out there. Now the Bible says there's none good, no, not one, but, but that kind of good is good when it comes to God's will. What I'm talking about is there's plenty of people out there that are not saved, but they do good things. Okay. And so when I tell you that what I'm trying to let you know is that they do not want to do the will of the Father, the will of God. And that's the good I'm talking about because that's the, that's the one that, that is our spiritual nature. So you got your spiritual nature, but bless their hearts. And we were there at one time. We didn't have a spiritual nature. Uh, we were dead and we were, uh, we didn't long for the things of God. We didn't want to hang around with people of God. We didn't want to read the word of God. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. So keep in mind that these people are, and we were at one time, spiritually dead. So when you're spiritually dead, you're not going to want to do the things that a Christian does or um, want to please God and that kind of thing. So, uh, sometimes we want people that, that may not be believers to do the things that we do or think like we do. And we can't, um, we can't look at them the same as far as that goes. We can't expect them to act like a Christian when they're not a Christian. And we cannot get, um, bothered or, um, what would you call it, shocked when they act like a lost person and when they do things that lost people do. Now we're going to talk about what we do when we're lost and what we did before we were saved. And those are the three things that I list that lists in the second verse. So you've got the first verse that lets us know that the lost are dead. Okay. And then you got the second verse, and the next thing he talks about is you walk according to the course of the world, okay? And, and then you've got the second part of that verse that says, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is the devil. And then you've got the third part, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So you've got the world and the devil and disobedience. Now, here, he did say this, and this is truly what I believe too is a lot of people think the devil has a lot of power and he don't compared to God. God is omnipotent, omnipresent. He is everywhere. He can hear everything. He is every, everywhere at one time. Um, if I'm praying right here or we're praying to God and somebody's over in Egypt praying, he can hear everybody at the same time. He's God. The devil can't do that. The devil is a created being. God created the devil because he's a fallen angel. So the devil does not have the kind of power that God does. So we can't give him, a lot of people give him too much credit. He's, I'm not saying that he's not mean or anything like that. He is the prince of the air and he does have demons and they do, you know, go around causing havoc. Now they do that. But what I want you to understand is um, that it's real and it's spiritual and there's a spiritual warfare. So you got um, the world and so many people want, the devil wants us to conform to the world, okay? 
and um, a lot of people think we're conservative or we're closed-minded or we're this or that when we do not conform to the things of the world. Um, in this book, there are things that God says are right, and there are things that God says that are wrong. But in the world that we live in today, they do not agree with what God says, okay? So God, that's, that's God's will for us, for us to live the way that he tells us to live in this book. And the sin that he calls out in this book in many parts of the world and, and in the Americas today, in our world today in America, the sin that God does call out is not considered sin where we live anymore. And what the devil would have is for us to conform to the world and believe that it's okay and it's not. Now, um, so that's one of the things the devil does is he wants us to conform to the world and he wants, and, and he also lies. So um, just keep that in mind. So you've got a lost person and you need to understand that they're dead spiritually they're not going to think on spiritual thoughts they are um of the world and they um really their father is the prince of the air i know it sounds terrible and if you're lost you don't want to feel that way and you don't want to feel like you're in that group or whatever but it's what god says you are in he also says if you are not for us you know if you're not for god then you're against him so, um, he, he just spells it out right here. So, um, and then he talks about our lust of the flesh. And what we're talking about here is not just our flesh and lust as far as sex and that kind of thing. It means that we are born in sin and we live in our flesh and it's our nature when we're born um, to be disobedient, to be with the world, to be, um, it's our nature to do bad things. We don't really have to be taught not to do bad things. It's, uh, I mean, it's easy for us to sin. It's a, it's our nature. And then the preacher said, it's kind of like this. He goes, this is funny. He says, I have a dog at home and he's 16 years old. And he's a Dots, I believe he said he was a Dotson, which is kind of like a weenie dog is what we call him. I say weenie. My mama always said weenies instead of hot dogs, y'all. I know that's funny, but so we call them weenie dogs, not wiener dogs, weenie dogs. And on that note, I actually had a professor in college. He was my math professor and his name was Wiener. And I just thought that was hilarious. But anyway, the preacher says he has a weenie dog. And he's 16 years old. And he said he acts like a dog. He acts like a dog because he has a dog's nature. He said, now, I don't have a cat. But if I came home one day and my dog acted like a cat, I would think, what in the world is wrong with my dog? He said, but he's not going to act like a cat because he's a dog. The same thing when you're lost. When you're lost, you have a sin nature. You still live in the flesh. When you're saved, you should have a spiritual nature. And you should feed it enough that it does help you in your day-to-day -day walk with Jesus. So I thought that was a pretty good illustration too. So um, I told you I wasn't going to talk but a minute, but I'm winding up talking more. So um, we've talked about the why he calls us dead. We've talked about... Um, and now they're calling us dead here in the New Testament and here in the first chapter in the whole Bible. So, I mean, that's, that's what it means. Okay. And then it talks about, um, the world, the devil, our, our spirit is of disobedience. And then our last thing that we talk about, it says, um, which is our lust of the flesh and the desires of the flesh and of our mind. And uh, we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Now, I know that's kind of a dark 
thing to say tonight, and I'm going to stop it with that, and that's where he stopped it. But last, uh, but but you know what? You know what the next verse starts with? The best thing in the whole Bible, and every time you see one, he says he circles his, and I mean, you've heard it a million times, but God. But God. But God made a way that we don't have to stay in our sin flesh nature, that we do not have to be dead spiritually thanks to Jesus Christ, right? So we're going to talk about that next week. So I hope and pray that everybody listening is saved. I hope and pray that you have a uh, spiritual nature, and I hope and pray that if you do not, that you listen and you listen to the Holy Spirit if He convicts your heart and um, you think about what I just told you because it's okay if you're lost and you've never felt like you wanted to look at a Bible or you've not really wanted to do the will of God. All of that's perfectly normal because you are dead in your trespasses and sin and that is your nature but what happens is God sin sends the Holy Spirit to convict your heart when you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and it changes your tune and your mind to be interested in the things of God and be interested in Jesus Christ and this salvation that we talk about if for any reason you listen tonight and you don't want to be dead in your trespasses and sin. And you want to have a spiritual um, birth is what it is, really. Um, then search on Real Southern Woman, How to Be Saved. I have a, um, a good video that you can listen to. And then if you ever have any question or anything, you could always give me, um, shoot me a message. And I'll make sure and get back to you. Um so that would that would just be great, you know. So um, I'm glad you guys tuned in tonight. I know it was kind of dark and dreary, but you know what? It's really not because the next verse says, "But God, but God, y'all, we the majority of us are not Jewish, and we were not God's chosen people, but God." being the most wonderful God in the world, you know, ever, and he's the only God anyway, but you know what I mean, sent his only son to be that sacrifice for us so that we could live spiritually. And it's very exciting, isn't it? To have a spiritual father, a heavenly father, and um, it's pretty cool. It's more than cool. It's a miracle. You know, people always search for these miracles and they get a lot of attention when they talk about miracles. But the biggest miracle of all is the work that God does through us, through his son, Jesus Christ, when he saves our soul and we, become, when we can live forever. Um, that's the biggest miracle of all the miracles that you could ever be a part of. And this Bible is way more alive than you think it is. So, um, I hope y'all have enjoyed Bible study tonight. I hope that I've encouraged you to read the Word of God. I hope that you'll get into Ephesians. You can read the first chapter um, and then go ahead and start on the second chapter. And we'll just do a continuation just on Wednesday nights. I might start doing that. Lord willing, I'll be here. Um, Chris is a little disappointed tonight because... He and his father were going to leave out on Friday morning and go down to Pensacola and go fishing. But there is a tropical storm, y'all, heading the way, uh, I think they're calling it a cyclone or something like that, heading towards Louisiana. So if any of y'all are in the path, uh, we'll be having you in our prayers because I know there's going to be a lot of flooding, a lot of rain. And it looks to me like New Orleans is already getting flooding. So, um, let's keep all of them in our prayers, um, and poor Chris and his dad will ha just have to wait, because the, 
even if they waited a few days and went, the fishing wouldn't be any any good because after a storm comes through like that, it messes up the water and the fish, and it's just a mess. So I'm not going to get a break from my husband. My mother-in-law's not going to get a break from her husband. But we're blessed to have them home with us and not down there where there might be some spin-off tornadoes because it's a mobile home and we don't want them to get blown away. So all my friends in Pensacola and down through the Gulf area, um, keep yourself safe. And we will see. Oh, I guess I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night is Family Food Fight, 9 o'clock, Channel 2. That's our local ABC, Channel 2. So I will not be on here tomorrow night because we will be watching um, our show. We're having a watch party at my brother's in Collard Valley. So um, that will be fun. I hope you get to watch us tomorrow night. We do better, so do not miss it. And um, I guess that's it. I love all y'all. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you so so much for giving us a spiritual birth giving us a way out of being dead in our trespasses and sin and helping us with your comforter and the holy spirit to guide us and truth to um prompt us to want to do the things of god to want to um Follow your will and read your word and spread the gospel so that many more can come to know Jesus as their personal Savior. May we never forget what you have done for us. And may we see the lost um, as they really are. One thing that I thought of tonight, Lord, was there's a show and some of the ladies are going to know and it's called The Walking Dead. And it's a crazy show on TV, but you know, this world is really full of people who are dead in their trespasses and sin, and they're walking all over this world. This world, when, when I was thinking of this tonight, that's exactly what I was thinking. How many people are really walking around that are truly dead, just like in that show, but it is truly a reality spiritually here on this earth. And I thank you for providing a way out. May we look at others that way so that we want to help them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a good night. Think about these people who are walking dead. I know that sounds crazy to some of y'all, but it's true. It's real. The difference in this is that it's real. The TV show is not real, but there really are people walking everywhere, according to God, that are dead. And you know, you, you know the definition of that now. So let's keep them in our prayers. I don't really think we pray enough for them. Um, and I'm, I'm just as guilty, of course. Um, I'll be seeing y'all Friday night, and I'm sure tomorrow night, I'm not sure if we'll do after the show tomorrow night because we are having it, you know, a view party away from the house. So we may have to do an after the show uh, live video tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow, Friday during the day sometime. But I will be on here for a Bible study Friday night. See y'all on the show tomorrow. I think you're going to be proud of us. Bye, y'all. Love ya. Oh, and Cake Boss is on there tomorrow. So if y'all like cakes and stuff, uh, make sure you watch it for that too. Bye. Love ya.